you know, God is seed, time, and harvest, okay? We have seed, and yeah, I hear so many Christians say, well, I sowed a lot of seed. And listen, I'm just as guilty as that as well. But yet when we say, okay, well, where's the harvest? We go, um, uh, well, um, I got one or two. Well, I understand, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm proud of you for, for getting one or two. And yeah, praise God that we are getting one or two, but God's, more, God's after more than just one or two in our lives. You know, God gave his son. He gave one seed. And from that one seed, he's expecting millions of other children besides his only begotten son. So in 1 John 5, 1 through 5, it starts out, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So we got to be born again. And everyone that loves him, that begat love, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. I want you to understand something. John is writing to the church. He's not writing to the unsaved. He's writing to the church. So we as a church have to love the children of God. We have to love God and we have to keep his commandments. Verse 3, for the love of God, for this is the love of God, excuse me, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. And that word not grievous is huge. In Hebrew, it's barus. It means violent, cruel, and unsparing. Listen, the Ten Commandments of God are not cruel. They're there so we can live an abundant life. It's so we can be the children of God. It's so we know that God is God and he's the only one that can do anything in our lives. Because without him, we can do nothing. So well, what, are his, what are his commandments? Um, yeah, well, they are the Ten Commandments. But Jesus said it this way, in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, you can write it down if you're taking notes, you don't have to turn to it. But this is what, this is what Jesus said in Matthew 22, 37 through 40. He said, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. First commandment is really all about your relationship with God. I want, I want to repeat that again. The first commandment is really all about your relationship with God. If your relationship with God isn't where it needs to be, or if you have no relationship with God, well, we can solve that tonight. But you need to have this relationship with God in order to fulfill the other commandment that, this, that Jesus is about ready to say. Because in verse 38, he says, this is the first and great commandment. The first and great commandment is love God with everything that you have. Because if you're withholding, you're not going to be able to do the second part. In 39, it says, and, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love, there's that big word, love, 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 thy neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law. Everybody say all. Thank you. The law and the prophets. That means everything in the Old Testament, the Torah, all the way up through the prophets, hang on this love walk with God. Hmm. Turning back to 1 John, verse 4, it says this, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. That is a great selling point to harvest souls. You know what? You get born again, you can overcome the world. That is great news to somebody who's depressed, stressed, oppressed, addicted, bound, demonic possessed, that's huge because they are focusing on what the world has to offer and they're not overcoming anything from what the world has to offer. That's, that's a great tool. 
But first, you need to understand this too, that because you're born of God, you, you have overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Well, what victory overcomes the world? You must be born of God. You got to harvest that tonight in your life. You must be born again. You must be born again. Well, what does, mean, what does overcome mean here uh, in Greek? Well, it's, it's of Christians that hold fast their faith even unto death against the power of their foes and temptations and persecutions. Listen, if you're worried about what someone's going to say to you when you tell them about Jesus, you need to get born again. You, you, you got to examine what is keeping me from asking the, the, the question about will you make Jesus Lord and King of your life? Will you accept him as the Son of God? Will you believe that he died for you and God rose him from the dead? Will you confess it with your mouth? Hmm. But if you're allowing the power of your foes to keep you from harvesting other people, then this is an area of your life that has some weeds and tares that you got to cut down and get rid of. Verse 5. Who is he that overcomes the world? Hmm, here we go again about overcoming the world. But he that what? believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Hmm. Again, you must be born again. You're saying, well, I am born again, Minister Ryan. Uh-huh. I understand. Well, are you harvesting other souls? Or, or is your rebuttal, well, God's working me on that area. Well, God's probably working on that area, but you're not letting him in. So, take the wall down and allow God to weed that area of your life. Just let him do it. In verse 6, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness. There's that powerful word of witness because the spirit is truth. I want you to understand the meaning of witness here in Greek. It means to be a witness, to bear witness, to affirm that one has seen or heard or experienced something or that he knows it because it's been taught by divine revelation or inspiration. Again, getting back to last Sunday's message by Pastor Aaron, listen, Flesh, flesh is not going to reveal it to you that Jesus is Lord. The Spirit will. God will. And you have to bear that witness when you talk about Jesus. Verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Verse 8, and there are three that bear, again, this word witness. It's the same word meaning as verse 6, that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Are you understanding the, the tone of what God is trying to say to you? It's time to be a witness but it's time to harvest yourself in order for you to be able to get the harvest that God's after. Verse 9, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, witness, witness, witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. And the word witness here is just a little bit different than verse 6 and 8. It actually means to testify. What one testifies a testimony before a judge? Well, the people that you're witnessing to are judging what you are saying. If you, I'm getting ahead of myself. If you don't believe 
that Jesus has overcome the world, he has overcome your fears, that he, that he is your strength to be able to witness, they're going to judge you as, nah. You know how I know that? Because it happened to me. So, so uh, I've lived this sermon and am living this, this, this teaching tonight. And, and, and listen, I have areas in... Uh, I'm, God's working on me. God's harvest, weeding out some things in my life to make me a better harvester. Verse 10, he that believes on the Son of God hath the witness, hath the witness in himself. He that believes not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. So do you believe the record of God? That Jesus came, died for you, and gave you eternal life? Hmm. And this is the record, verse 11, that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. This life is not in the world. Your life cannot be so dependent on this world. It needs to be dependent on God. And this meaning of life in Greek is zoe, the God kind of life. Let, you know, the Lord's prayer, let God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let the heaven, the kingdom of God rule and reign in your life. In verse 12, he that hath the son hath life, and he that hath not the son of God hath not life. Verse 13, and this is going to be my final scripture, and I have a couple questions to ask of you before, before I, I pray. Verse 13, these things have I written unto you. John is writing to the church that what? That you believe on the name of the Son of God. He's telling the church, hello, believe on the name of the Son of God. That you may know, that you may know you have eternal life. You cannot give out what you don't have. So tonight, do you have eternal life? Do you have it? If the answer is yes, for the love of God, please give it out. Give it out. In the next part, and that ye may again, it gets back to, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. The meaning of believe here is placing confidence in. The meaning of to know in Greek is to have an interview with. Is your relationship with God where you're having an interview with? Are you talking with him? Because if you're not, then I'm sorry, then you... You're not going to get a harvest. All you're going to do is sow seeds, and, and the seeds are, gonna f are just going to die because they're flesh words. So tonight, the question is, will you marry God tonight? Will you take on his name to the world? You know, when I asked my wife to marry her, she said, yes. Thank God that she did. She said, yes. And then guess what? Her name changed from Bridget Fitzpatrick to Bridget Welker. And now everywhere she goes after 13 years of marriage, soon to be 14, she signs her name Bridget Welker because she took on my name. Well, tonight, have you taken on God's name. Will you marry him tonight? So I'm going to close in prayer. If you don't know God tonight, now is your chance. Now is your chance. Chat in online. If you're up front, you know, not asking you to come forward, but just ask God to forgive you of your sin and believe that he sent his son Jesus
Jesus to die for you, and that he rose him again, rose him from the dead, seated at the right hand of God, and confess with your mouth, yes, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and you shall be saved, that you will have a harvest. God will get a harvest from that, so you can go and take to the world. I love you tonight, church, and I pray that tonight your harvest, your soul gets harvested. 